The American Revolution by Salmandrani The Battle of Lexington and Concord My name is John Parker, General of a Small Militia at Lexington. On the morning of April 19, 1775, British officers came looking for weapons in Lexington. When they approached us, they yelled, Lay down your arms, you damn rebels. I yelled back to my men, Do not fire it unless fired upon, but if they want a war, let it begin here. From a distance, a shot was fired. That shot made the British attack us. They charged us with bayonets and quickly took control. The British, however, did not find any hidden weapons because we had already spread them. They headed back to Concord, not knowing that we had troops hiding in the trees at the North Bridge. When they passed through, we ambushed them and opened fire. They began a retreat to Lexington. Farmers and other brave rebels fired at the British, who suffered 250 casualties along the way. Although we won at the small ambush in Concord, we lost a battle. The Battle of Bunker Hill June 17, 1775 I am John Smith. I was on my post on Breeze Hill, where to kick the British out of Boston. They commanded 2,000 redcoats to march up the hill to our fort. Commander Colonel William Prescott shouted, Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. As the British drew near, we fired at them. We killed many, and the rest went back down the hill. They came up a second time and a third time, but by the third time we had ran out of ammunition. We fired our last shots in them, and we retreated. Twice as many records were killed than of us. Even if we lost, we proved we can take the British. Second Continental Congress and the Road to Independence May 10, 1775 John Adams, delegate from Massachusetts. I attended the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia. Delegates from 12 colonies had come to decide to either have peace with Britain or to declare war. And if they declared war, who would be the leader of the army? I was not up for peace. My colony was ready to declare independence from Britain. I will not forgive Britain for Lexington and Concord and Bunker Hill. I spoke freely in the convention and Benjamin Franklin shared my point of view. After debating it over and over, the delegates agreed with going to war. The next question was who was going to be the leader of the army. The first choices were John Hancock and General Henry Lee, but I suggested George Washington to be the general of the colonial army. After debating it, it was decided that George Washington was going to be the general. The Second Continental Congress helped to decide military and war tactics and was the biggest step towards independence. The Battle for Long Island August 27, 1776. My name is Joseph Plum Martin. It was my first battle. An American spy warned General George Washington that British troops were going to attack Long Island. When the British came, I was scared. They outnumbered us two to one. We were an amateur army compared to the British that were combated by General Howe. The Red Coats marched up to us and at about a hundred yards away they began a very heavy fire. While Joseph was concerned with the first wave, another group of Red Coats secretly went around through the Jamaica Pass. It was a surprise attack. I was dodging bullets when I heard shouts from behind. The British had come from behind too, so everyone panicked and ran for their lives. Every time we looked back, they were right behind us. The only way out was through the Guanas Marsh. It was a massacre. Soldiers screamed for help stuck in the marsh as British soldiers shot them. Thomas Paine's American Crisis 1776 These are the times that tribe men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in the crisis, shrink from the service of his own country. But he who stands by it now deserves the loves and the thanks of men and women. These are the famous words that inspired patriots in the Confederate Army when everyone wanted to give up. The American Crisis, 16 pamphlets written by Thomas Paine to boost the spirit. After all of the lost battles in the command of General George Washington, soldiers were deserting and colonists were evacuating. They were almost certain that the trained British army under the command of General Howe was going to beat Washington. So on December 23, 1776, 
Three days before the Battle of Trenton, General George Washington read the American crisis aloud to boost the morale of the Confederate Army. Thomas Paine's cleverly written words made a big impact on the self-confidence of the Army. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. The Battle of Saratoga, September 19th, October 17th, 1777. I am Sergeant Thomas Sullivan. After both the British Army, led by General Bergeson, and us, led by General Gates, had retreated to our campgrounds after a hard-fought battle of Freeman's Farm, Bergeson attacked again. This time, we captured a portion of the British defenses and surrounded the British armies at Saratoga. Bergeson was forced to retreat. It was our first victory, and these news brought France to formally become our ally. It was a turning point of the revolution. Valley Forge Winter Camp Winter of 1777-1778 My name is Baron Frederick Wilhelm von Steuben. When I went to George Washington's camp, the army was destroyed. They were hungry and were in lack of supplies and military training. The cold was unbearing and the soldiers were ill. So I trained and educated the soldiers to make them a real professional army after a whole winter of hardships. My experience in the Perusian army helped the army's military tactics and increased the chances of defeating the British. The Battle of Cowpans, January 17, 1781. My name is William Asbury, and I fought besides General Daniel Morgan against General Tarleton in the Battle of Cowpens. We were told to go to the front lines and fire two rounds. Then we had to retreat. The British were confident that they were going to win, so as we retreated, they fell for our trap and charged at us to finish us off once and for all. But on the other side, we had the Continental Army waiting for them. We fought hard and successfully beat the British. Using clever tactics in guerrilla warfare, we killed 39 officers, 60 soldiers, and captured 829 others. The War at Sea with John Paul Jones September 23, 1779. I am Paul Jones, commander of a 2 ship on home Richard. On September 23, 1779, the 50-gun British ship HMS Serapis and the 20-gun Countess of Scarborough blocked my squadron. My fellowship alliance fired at the Countess and the Serapis fired at the Bonhomme. I knew that I would not win the bigger gun contest, so I locked my ship to the Serapis. When the Bonhomme started to sink, the British commander asked if I wanted to give up. I have not yet begun to fight, I yelled back. With the help of the Alliance, my men cleared the Serapis deck, and the British commander surrendered. The Bonhomme Richard sunk in flames proudly, and we sailed back to Holland. The Battle of Yorktown October 9th through October 19, 1781 I am Sergeant Brown, an eyewitness on October 19, 1781, when the British General Cornwallis surrendered to General Washington and General Rochambeau. General Rochambeau was the head of the French army, and tremendously helped on the day that we surrounded the British fort in Yorktown. Their siege lasted for days. Every day, we bombarded the British, and we creeped a little closer. The British were running out of time, food, and ammunition, and on October 19, 1781, Cornwallis surrendered. Finally, the United States had to be acknowledged as an independent country by the British. Thanks to men who gave up their lives back then, we get the liberty we have today.